Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. So in this video, I'd like to give you an updated uh, overview of the um, Elite Wave technical analysis of ETH. And we're also going to specify the overall target area highlighted in yellow a little bit closer, just to give you a better understanding of where we might be heading with a higher probability um, and where we might end this overall correction for ETH. So generally looking at what, what we have here in this last leg down for the overall Ethereum correction, and I'm really talking here about the last leg down after Ethereum, um, after Ethereum's back then all time high in May, started this correction down, then we moved up also in a corrective wave B, and now we are coming down here in this wave C over wave two. This was the wave one, and down here in light blue, you see the wave two, I should just need to label that differently. <clears throat> so that is the wave one of the same degree as this wave two down here. And we made an ABC correction. Ideally in such a wave C, you would get lower than the wave A. Ethereum doesn't necessarily need to, because there is a different way of counting it. And it basically already came down to the same level as the wave A as well. So from from that point of view it would be okay if eth actually holds above 1700 dollars and from that point of view as well the higher level targets for this overall correction the minimum requirements have already been achieved by ethereum anyway so it doesn't necessarily need to come down lower but it would in my opinion be better for the chart so where would we expect ethereum to land yeah in an ideal case in this move down to specify further and closer this yellow target area. So for that, we start the FIP level down here. Oops, no, not like that. Be a pretty big target area. Now we use the Fibonacci retracement tool, go all the way up to the high of the wave one. Yeah, very important, go up to the high of the wave one. And uh, just need to be a bit um, more accurate down here. And yeah, now we do that. So we start here. At that swing low, we go to the high of the wave one, not to the high of the wave B, very important. We go to the high of the wave one, and then we take a look at these Fibonacci retracement levels here. And an ideal target for a wave two is this $1,239 level. Reason for that is we dropped already below the 61.8% FIB level, that is at 61.8%, we're below that anyway. So the next, I and also an ideal target for a wave two correction, in such an expanded flat pattern that we're doing here is 1239 US dollars. Yeah, the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement level. It could even be possible to move down to $800 here, the 88.7% Fibonacci retracement level. I think very, um, very ambitious investors wouldn't have a problem with that, but yeah, it would need quite a lot of a push down to really get down to that area. And that would also need Bitcoin to really be smashed down, but it is a worst case target that we need to have on the radar. But my view is that 1239 should be a good support and that actually pretty much aligns very well with the target range that I did specify earlier. But when I did that, I just gave you some rough estimates. So it's actually here 1239 and the, um, so that was also based on the 200 week moving average. And let me see if I find that actually here, the 200 week moving average in green, which is also an important support for Bitcoin. Now that is currently hovering around $1,200. So that will also be additional support down there. Um, the 200 week moving average has also for Ethereum been quite an important support level actually for Bitcoin more than for ETH. Here ETH apparently dropped below it um, a few times. Bitcoin didn't really. So that is something to keep an eye on. But it is still a very, very relevant level, I would suppose, for ETH as well. And then here around the um, the $1,500 level where this target area begins, we've got some technical support levels here, a swing low and another swing low here around 1,260. So sort of in this range, there's quite a bit of um, quite a bit of support expected as well. Yes, yeah, should we lose? Only should we lose the $1,700 level? So if we go to the one hour chart, this would be what we expect to hit this yellow target area here between $1,500 and 1239 to finish off the overall correction in the higher level wave two. After we came down here in a wave three in brackets in green and moved up in a wave four in green. Let me just take that out. 
here and that wave 4 will be finished where the wave E high ends of this triangle that might already be finished and after that the wave 4 will go down into a wave 5 and that will unfold as a 5 wave impulsive move to the downside. So what this means is that we are currently in a triangle, maybe the triangle was already broken to the downside but we don't have enough evidence for that yet and then if there is a break below $1700 this will be the most likely place where we will find the ETH price and also where we will expect the reversal to the upside. Um, Ethereum also, yeah, in, in this move up here, um, did already reach actually an ideal retracement level for its wave four. So again, I don't know why, <laughs> why I don't use the FIP tool, but just this yellow box. Um, so from the high to the low, you can see Ethereum reached the, okay, it reached the 23.6% FIP level. It hasn't yet reached the 38.2% FIP level. For a wave two, this would be an ideal target. So if this triangle breaks to the upside, which is always a valid option, then we could expect prices here in the region between the 38.2% FIP level and the 50%. So between 2,262 and $2,437, yeah? That would be a different st structure then, and we could actually expect that wave four to end here. Yeah, this is something we need to keep an eye on. This is not off the table at the moment, rather unlikely because we're quite low with the price here. But should the price decide to break here above the wave C high at $2,013, I would expect that we actually get into this region here between $2,262 and $2,437. Before then, however, the wave four will be finished and we will then move down into this yellow target area. So these are the two key scenarios I'm currently looking at. I'm currently not really entertaining the idea of a breakout scenario, which means we are going to see more extended moves to the upside. It is technically possible, I told you. The low could be in at any point now. I said that a lot of times as well. And the reason for that is because Ethereum did reach those key areas that we've been talking about since uh, the end of November. But um, looking at the lower level wave count, my primary expectation is we go down into this yellow target area straight away with a breakout below $1,700. The alternative scenario would be here to move a little bit higher in a wave four into those Fibonacci retracement zones I just co uh, gave you and then to move down. And the third likely option would be a breakout to the upside, yeah, which I don't think is very likely at the moment not with this structure but as i always say as soon as we see evidence in the chart we can change the scenario and as soon as we see here a five wave impulse which we don't see yet then we can look at that but at the moment we don't and um, this would only be really realistic and get likely for me should we really make it above 2437 dollars which would be above the 50 percent fibonacci retracement level so from that point of view at the moment, um, generally already very attractive prices, I think for ETH, yeah, um, in the very short term, it already looks like we broke here. Uh, we came down here in a C wave, um, ABC, yeah, to finish the wave D, moved up in a wave E, and this could already be the impulse down. We don't have enough signals yet, so a move below $1,700 would confirm that we are here in the, in the move down, and that is what I would expect, you know. Um, generally already from my point of view, very attractive prices for ETH. I mean, it can go lower, yes, but we also need to um, look at the potential, um, the merge coming up. Um, I think it's August at the moment, scheduled for August. And um, that will, in the weeks before that, in my opinion, in the right environment, we always need the right market environment and we might have it by then. Um, we'll probably create a bit of a rally like the London hard fork um, last year. I think that was also in August. We saw quite a bit of a rally and I think Ethereum was one of the first assets that started the run um, to new all-time highs in autumn. I think Ethereum was one of the first ones outperformed Bitcoin and the other alts for a while. Um, so that is something that could happen again when the merge is dropping. And I think currently they plan for August, but it might be delayed a little bit again. So, um, but that will be something big when that is coming. Definitely have something very, very interesting for the ecosystem that will create a lot of focus again and interest in ETH. And uh, yeah, coupled with the right market sentiment and environment that could lead really to a run to the upside, but it's really too, too early to talk about that. But it's something that investors really should keep in mind 
about ETH. Um, yeah, that is my view about Ethereum here at the moment. So hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then check out the channel membership where you can get access to the Telegram live chat groups, the Discord server and the weekly live stream. And today there will be another live stream at five o'clock UTC. Um, and today we actually talk about the Cardano Vasil hard fork that's coming up and yeah, as it seems, the Ethereum merge actually. So hopefully you like the update. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.